الإنسان لو أطلقته متأملا في قدرة الرحمن لخضعت إجلالا وتسبيحا له سبحانه رب عظيم الشان Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I come to you live from the Rawla of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is uh, buried in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha wa abaha. The closest you can be to our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is seated next to this uh, green access window, uh, which is left to the Rawla of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm seated in the Rawla at the moment. There are some important landmarks that I can discuss with you. The first of them is this pillar. It says that this is the Ustuan of Al Haris, meaning the protectors of the Prophet and his guardians. Ali radiallahu anhu and Zubayr they used to camp there in the times of danger against the Prophet. This post is called the Ustuana of the Sirir, the place of reclining of the Prophet in Atikaf. He would lay his uh, bed in this area, his bedding, and he would sleep there. The Prophet his home, the house of Aisha, is just in the green over there. The house of Fatima is two uh, steps behind, it's hidden behind this post. Uh, this is the pillar uh, of Abu Lubadah, it's called Amud al Rahman, the pillar of repentance, where Abu Lubadah tied himself seeking repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the Prophet came and untied him to make sure that he had been forgiven by Allah. This is the Ustuana of Aisha radiallahu anha wa al-Baha. It is a pillar in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where it became the regular habit of the Prophet to lead himself in prayer facing it and he would do his salah having faced uh, with that as his qibla sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You could see that there are different markings on the pillars of the masjid of the Prophet So, for example, this marble post, it only has a small red sash, meaning this is the outer part of the rawda, and the inner part has a full red sash, as you could see. And then it comes back to a smaller red sash. So between this one and the very far one there, that is what is referred to as the rawda, which is now one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Um, the Prophet ﷺ used to lead the believers in prayer from his mihrab. And this is the mihrab of the Prophet ﷺ. That's where the Prophet would lead the believers in prayer. And of course, his pulpit is there ﷺ. And in the authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ would say, what is between, as you could read on this epitaph, Jannah, what is between my home and my pulpit where I teach you is a garden from the gardens of paradise. Now I do want to explain something about this hawda of the Prophet The Prophet says in an authentic hadith that when you pass by the gardens, uh, then enjoy their comfort. And they said, O Messenger of Allah, which gardens and what is the comfort of the gardens? The Prophet ﷺ said, Hilaf al it is the place where knowledge is taught. I'm going to zoom in onto the inner chamber of the Prophet ﷺ, and you can see there that inside there is a little bit of a green veil that covers the house and the outer part of the house of the Prophet ﷺ. It's very similar to the cloth of the Kaaba, except it's green in color. So when the Prophet said that the Rawla is a place of learning, it's where the knowledge is taught, it does not necessarily mean, according to the majority of ulama, that this is an actual place from paradise or that it will be transported in paradise. Um, and that uh, is something that is a statement, but it's not the only statement. So it is something that's important to make note of. It's about an hour and a half before Salat al -Dukh, and people, alhamdulillah, are coming to enjoy the comfort of the prayers here. I have to have finished my salah and I'm about to leave. I just wanted to make this um, video for you uh, so that you're aware of it, inshallah. Uh, behind us, the women are assembled, and this is as far up as they will come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for their patience. 
Um, over here, uh, uh, the Masjid of the Prophet وسلم, there's another ihrab, and that place of prayer is the prayer of Uthman that's where Uthman had expanded the Masjid south towards, but the Prophet وسلم, used to lead the believers in prayer from here. Uh, it's a wonderful experience, of course, to visit the Masjid of the Prophet وسلم, and uh, it isn't something that one should buy or jest or uh, hurt others to get into the road of the Messenger Muhammad وسلم. There's many other places in the Masjid of the Prophet وسلم, where Salah is of equal magnitude. There is no statement of the Prophet وسلم, that says that praying in this area is better than praying in another part of his Masjid. Uh, this is all part of the complex of the Rasul Sallallahu Masjid. It is a place that we honor and ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to allow us to return many more times. Allahumma Ameen. Uh, I'm about to go out through this gateway and then give salam to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accept her from us. I see that one of the brothers or sisters is put to pray for Kashmir. Wallahi, that was a part of my dua. May Allah ease the suffering of the believers in each and every place that they are. May Allah allow peace to reign in the world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support our brothers and sisters who are oppressed uh, in Kashmir with the Rohingya, with those who are oppressed in East Turkmenistan or, uh, uh, you know, what is referred to as uh, the new China. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of the believers, uh, all of humanity from that which is evil and that which is sinful and that. Uh, extrajudicial killings and uh, dishonor that has brought been brought into the world. Allahumma ameen. I ask you to pray for your brother Yahya that Allah accept his hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for those hujjaj who are with me and with other groups. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return us to these lands many more times and may Allah accept from all of us. Allahumma ameen. Uh, from the rawda of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Taqabalallahu minna wa minkum salih al-a'mal. May you have a blessed Eid, Allahumma Ameen. This is uh, the pulpit of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, it's not the same uh, marble uh, edifice that you see here, but it is the exact same place. And the Prophet Sallallahu says in the authentic hadith that his pulpit will be ready for him on the Day of Judgment. It will be planted for him by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala near Al-Kawthar, which is the pond that we will gather around on the Day of Judgment. He will give us a drink. May Allah allow us to be quenched by the hand of the Prophet ﷺ, giving us a drink that will not give us, uh, that will quench our thirst from ever uh, being thirsty again. Uh, of course, the rawda of the Prophet ﷺ is from the side of the uh, pulpit until where his home is, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and therefore being in this area is not from the rawda of the Prophet ﷺ. You see that these pillars they have. Um, five vertical gold sashes coming down and this was the first building of the masjid of the prophet sallallahu so if i come here this is as large as the masjid of the prophet sallallahu was this is the furthest extent to it and it extended to his home sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this from there to the green area would have been the house of the prophet sallallahu and then later on in his life, the Prophet ﷺ expanded his masjid a little bit more and it became all the way, uh, you know, another uh, 15 uh, meters or so to where it is demarcated by this green sign. So these were the poles of the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. This is where his masjid came to an end before the end of his life. It didn't double its base, but it added another quarter. Uh, this. Uh, place of prayer is an ornamental one that was done by the Sultan who uh, rebuilt the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of the important uh, markings that might also be important to make note of is that behind the prayer place of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I'll walk with you to it now inshallah, is uh, the marking of one of the trees uh, that is famously reported in the Sunnah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said um, You know, it was heard uh, that the tree would weep and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam consoled it um, And hugged it. He uh, hugged the tree and this pole right here Is where this tree was it was right next to the prayer place of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is the mihrab of Uthman radiallahu anhu wa 
Uthman ibn Affan, he expanded the Masjid of the Prophet south, so he built an extra access way. And this is where the Imam for many years would lead the prayer, where Uthman radiallahu anhu used to lead the salah. Umar radiallahu anhu had also expanded the Masjid south, and Umar's mihrab was right here, so with this pole and this pole. So about three lines back is where Umar had built it. And where I'm standing right now is where Umar radiallahu anhu was martyred, right where Uthman ibn Affan used to lead about four steps back. This is the mihrab of Umar radiallahu anhu Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Uh, if we continue a little bit fur, uh, further down, this is where we come to the muwajaha, where we face the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we greet the Prophet sallallahu So the rawda is in there, and this is where we come to greet our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greeting of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is not in the first golden window, rather it is the second. And when we greet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we make dua for him and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him. So you will see that at the top there it says, Huna salamu ala Rasulillah. This is where you greet the Prophet. And if you were to look directly um, that way, which I am now, you greet the Prophet saying, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. I greet you, O Messenger of Allah. Ashadu annaka qad addayt al amana. I bear witness that you have fulfilled your duty. And have, com and have conveyed the message. You gave sincere advice to your ummah. You struggled and strived in the path of Allah as you were required. May Allah reward you with the best for that which you have done for your community, the community of believers. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join you join us with you in Jannah al Firdaus. Allahumma jma'na ma'a nabiyyina Muhammad. You step a little bit further down, and here is the salam upon Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is buried one foot behind the Prophet and halfway down toward where his shoulder is, is the head of uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. We say, Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Bakr. Asallahu an yajma'na bika fil jannah. Assalamu alaikum O Abu Bakr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join us with you in jannah for your valor that you have displayed. Ya Siddiqa al ummah. You were the verifier of truth for our ummah. Another step in we say, Assalamu alaikum to Umar. And you could see the two epitaphs there. Huna assalamu ala Umar al Khattab. We say, Assalamu alaikum ya Umar. Ya Farooq al ummah. Assalamu alaikum Umar. You are a criterion of justice, of right from wrong for our ummah. May Allah join us with you in Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. And there is nothing past that in this alley. Uh, that is the burial chamber of the Prophet ﷺ, which is the house of our Nabi Muhammad ﷺ. This is not a part of the masjid and people do not pray inside there. Uh, above the burial place of the Prophet ﷺ, it says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti nabi O ye who believe, do not raise your voices a level above the voice of the Messenger ﷺ. It's not just the physical aspect of it, but it's also uh, do not raise your voice, meaning in contradiction to what he has brought. And do not speak to him or reject from him what you would from other people, uh, because in that doing so, you will lose your good deeds. May Allah protect us from this. The next epitaph, it says, those who lower their vase, our voices before the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلْتَّقْوَىٰ They are those who have shown they have passed the test of Allah's piety. Uh, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accept it from all of us. Allahumma ameen. The final thing that I'll show you is this window. This is the place of the house of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu arda. And it is uh, um, an interesting place. Inside it, I don't know if we'll be able to see, but inside it, it contains the empty space where the house of uh, Umar radiallahu anhu was, and there are books and, and bricks that are still there. There are books and uh, books that uh, there are bricks from the initial building that are still placed there of the house of Umar. People used to visit it up to about 700 years after the time of uh, the death of Umar radiallahu anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept it from all of us. I'm now exiting from the gateway of Al Baqiyah. May Allah subhanahu wa taala. Join us with the shuhada and the martyrs and the salihin in Jannatul Firdaus. Your brother Yahya Ibrahim, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa